Welcome to the 12 Step Buddhist Podcast, episode 44, Practices of the Bodhisattva Continued, practice number two. So before we go into the text, I'd like to do a practice that occurred to me during my meditation this morning. So you'll want to imagine breathing in compassion and breathing and breathing out trauma. And I'll say more about that, about trauma and stuff in, in the moment. But if you imagine, you know, sitting in front of you, someone who is, or a way of imagining compassion, it doesn't have to be a, a person or a figure, it can be like a, a light, it can be like a rose gold colored light or a pink light or blue light or something that that feels to you like compassion. If you're not a visualizer, you can be a feeler, you know, you can be a listener. You can listen to the sound of someone's kind voice, uh, something nurturing. But the idea is to imagine the compassion is before you. Compassion is out there somewhere. And you're going to, you're going to, you know, say it's the Dalai Lama and, uh, or the Buddha uh, or your teacher, uh, or Jesus, or something, something that works for you. So you're going to inhale that, you're going to breathe in, so obviously you're going to start in a meditation position of some kind of straight back seated posture. And of course you can do this any, anywhere, anytime, but, you know, for a practice, for a, for a seated uh, practice, you would imagine the figure, or the, uh, the representation, the, let's just call it the symbol of compassion before you. And you're going to breathe it in and let that light, let that warmth, let that relief um, fill you. And when you exhale, you're going to exhale the crap. You're going to exhale the anxiety, the fear, you know, what you don't want. So you can start this, and I'm just, I'm doing this off the top of my head. It just occurred to me. I haven't written it out or anything yet, but. I will use it, I believe, in the, in, the, in the new book, Compassionate Recovery. It's a really good way to kind of incorporate what we've done in other practices, that concept of inhaling what you want and exhaling what you don't want, or just kind of being specific with, you know, the experience of compassion or someone, something else, something out there that's compassionate, that's been compassionate. So you can think of you can write this out if you want. You can even put it on your phone and, and have this as a reference. Think of a time someone's been very, very compassionate to you. If someone's been very kind, very soft, very sweet, even if it's just a little, a little thing with a stranger, or you know maybe a you know a loved one or a, a caregiver, a nurse. Um, so take a moment to remember a moment, a figure, a person, a symbol, a feeling of compassion. And then take a moment to remember a feeling of trauma, a feeling of shock, um, disbelief, awe. I mean, you're just flabbergasted. You can't believe that person just did that. You know, maybe your mother left you at the store or your um, partner, um, you know, told you they were seeing someone else or somebody you know said something insensitive to you even it doesn't have to be a huge trauma it doesn't have to be a hurricane or a war maybe a trauma that's a a a shock that puts you in fight or flight or freeze and puts you in that state of um, harm you know so you've got an awareness of the two things. You've got the Dalai Lama seated, smiling, looking at you with the most kindness you can ever imagine experiencing, completely non judgmental, pure love, pure compassion. You've got this wound inside you. And wherever you feel that in your throat, your neck, your back, your jaw, your lower back, your shoulders, your stomach, wherever you feel that. And just be still and breathe in the light of compassion and 
breathe out the anxiety and the anger, the sadness, the loneliness, the depression. And this is a really gentle practice. Notice any tension in the body, notice yourself tensing up in any way. Let your exhale bring you into relaxation. And we can do the thing that I always teach. Where you inhale nice and deep, breathe it in, breathe it in, breathe it in, fill up, fill up, and even clench, even hold on, even just really, really grip that feeling of anxiety. And then exhale. <sighs> Pause in the emptiness. Imagine the Buddha in front of you, breathe in healing light, breathe in compassion, breathe in love, and put it, put it with your palms down into that place in your body. Let it soothe you and exhale as you exhale. Let go of the negative. So I'll get more specific and write that out. But for now, the 37 practices, picking up from podcast 43, where I talked about how to start a compassionate recovery meeting. We've got a lot more, a lot more cool stuff coming on that. Um, going into the second practice of the 37 practices of a bodhisattva. Number two, passion towards friends churns like water. Hatred towards enemies burns like fire. Through ignorance, one forgets what to adopt and what to reject. To abandon one's homeland is the practice of a bodhisattva. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I get anxiety. It was in the trauma conference I just went to this weekend. Uh, this is being recorded uh, January, what is it? 16th, maybe? Um, I'll have to double check, it's a Sunday. Anyways, it's a sense of being home. People, when people run from disaster, they run towards home. And there are pictures of the 9-11 experience, people running from the towers towards home. Because home, it, the feeling is that when we get towards home, we're going to be safe, we're going to be okay. You know, and in traumatic experiences, in trauma, in early childhood or any time, if the home is unsafe, if the caregiver is unsafe, you know, there was a, a story of a, a lady who was walking home. As she walked home from school, you know, she had the anxiety of going home to the alcoholic mother who was unpredictable, chaotic. It would be dark in the house. There wouldn't be no food. She'd be alone with her, you know, that experience. So going home was unsafe and for many of us in, in, our, in addiction and in recovery. That's definitely our story. It may be our, that may be our story now in this moment. We may be in an abusive situation or a toxic relationship or a toxic workplace or a bad neighborhood. You know what we say in AA, you know, <laughs> my head's a bad neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, Maybe we can change that. But the idea is to understand that, you know, we have passions, we have anger, we have attachment, we have aversion, we have anger, we have passion. It's a, both equally problematic in the space of emptiness, in the space of compassion. You know, we can see these things as one or the other without being too attached to too offended, too repulsed, you know, repul repulsion, you know, repulsed. That's a really good, you know, it's a really good word. It's a powerful word. You might make a list of things that you feel passionate about. And you might make a list of things that you feel re repulsed by. And you might look and, and you might look and, and ask yourself, you know, if you can be, you know, how would Buddha sit within that space with all things good and bad, all things dark and light? 
Now, through dark ignorance, one forgets what to adopt and what to reject. So we don't even know we're stuck in samsara. We don't even know. That's called dark ignorance. We don't know there's a Buddha. We don't know there's a teaching. We don't know that there's a path that leads to the cessation of suffering. Or if we do know, we don't know how to practice or we forget to practice. I don't know about you, but I've been on a a spiritual path of some sort since, at least since I got sober, originally in 1984, and I've, I'm a real sincere practitioner. I really mean it. I'm the real deal. I'm not a faker. I'm not a poser. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm not doing it for marketing. I'm not trying to set up an empire. You know, I've never been interested in that. I'm a practitioner because I have to be. I really don't have any other choice. You know, this, this, the truth of suffering is real, has been real clear. And for those of us who have experienced trauma, it's all too clear. It's all too close to home. It may be what happens when we sit still. And we'll talk a lot more about this as we, as we develop the Compassionate Recovery Project. But, you know, for some of us, and I've always wondered why people in AA couldn't come with me to the Zen Center and sit still, because when they sit still, they freak the fuck out. It's overwhelming. The experience of trauma, the trauma response is unbearable. And we call that in AA the intolerable, intolerable consciousness of our reality. This is why we self-medicate. And one of the therapists at the conference said, you know, wow, brilliant. You learned how to self-medicate. You learned how to survive. Brilliant. It's not working anymore. Let's work on some new ways. But wow, it's amazing that you came up with that somehow. Even if it's whatever it is, crazy sounding, looking thing, drinking, using, cutting, gambling, being addicted to porn, however it is, you know. Amazing that your system could create a survival technique. Okay, we've got this far. Now what? What's next? Breathe in compassion, breathe out trauma. We've got to release the trauma. There's a lot to say. I can't do it in a, in a short podcast, but I want to talk about the topic a lot going forward because it's, real, it's, really the new, it's really the new way to understand addiction and healing. It's really, what, it's really the key, really, to a new understanding and practice. You know. So... You know, we have the experience of um, trying to go home. And what would the Bodhisattva practice be? How would we apply that? How would we really do that? Let's think it through. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I didn't have a home of my own for a couple of years after the uh, toxic syndrome of trauma bonding with the borderline personality wife. And I just got so disoriented. I got so back in the in the in the south node of the uh, karmic astrology you know into the past into the into those attachments of of the suffering of the past you know and now looking into the north node into the where this where's the chart what is this what is the astrological system set up to guide me towards where am i where i've got if i face north if i face the future i'm looking at the healing i'm looking at the practices of the bodhisattva i'm looking at a compassionate form of recovery. I'm looking at healing. I'm looking at being a gentler. I've been talking to a very nice woman who I met on Instagram, actually, and she suggested that I kind of have a gentle, <laughs> try, try to be, have a gentler approach, you know, and I just, um, I, listen, I was listening to the podcast episode 43 to, kind of remember where I left off on the 37 practices I just want to live and normally when I listen to my podcast I'm like wow that's great I I sometimes I'll listen to it like three or four times it's almost like coaching myself or you know what I mean like bringing online my inner coach and we're going to talk more about that too in the future because the whole aspects of self-dialogue thing it's very powerful it still works it can still be worked and some of the therapists at the conference were talking about you know we did psychodrama. We're talking about different um, parts of the self, and how there are a lot. Of, there's a lot of really good stuff. And I'm going to write out the practices and put them in the 
on the CompassionateRecoveryProject.com website. We'll record things and have stuff up there. It's going to be an online resource. And if you'd like to contribute things, if you're a therapist, and you, or you're a practitioner, or you're a teacher, or you're a yogi, you want to contribute something, let's get a big community thing up there. I'm open to it. If nobody contributes anything, I'll contribute stuff. But it's a project that's a collaboration, CompassionateRecoveryProject.com. But my my friend um, suggested, and she's a real deep practitioner in the in the Thai forest tradition, and to her, our Western kind of ego oriented Buddhist approach can be kind of shocking and hard to understand. And I get it, you know. Um, Buddhism as another way of being hip. I've never been for it. I've never understood that, but. This is the way people approach the Dharma, as we say in AA, whatever keeps you coming back, you know, whatever keeps you coming back. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a step in the right direction, you know. But the idea of being gentle, and I'm listening to my podcast, and I'm like, ooh, ah, ooh, shame, oh my God, I, I sound so edgy, I sound so harsh, you know. And I think what happened at this conference, I just spent three days with 600 therapists and scientists, researchers, teachers, healers. We did a lot of practices and we talked a lot of, about a lot of traumas, a lot of, a lot of stories. We talked a lot about addiction, a lot about recovery, a lot about healing. And there was, just, there was just a lot of trauma. A lot of triggers came up. Some of it was almost unbearable. I had to sit on my hands and listen to stories and dis descriptions and, 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 you know, it was a lot. But I did a lot of healing. Uh, my friend Julie was there. She's in recovery too. She's also, you know, triggered by all this stuff. And we, we did our best, you know. And I connected with a lot of people. And, and somehow I've come out of that. It was really life-changing. The International Conference on Addiction and Trauma. I got to hang out with <laughs> Claudia Black, Bessel van der Kolk. I mean, just people that are, you know, Mark Gold, um, Patrick Carnes, I mean, Out of the Shadows. When did I have that book? 1985 or something? I mean, he wrote the book, The Betrayal Body. He's got a new uh, updated edition coming out next month. I, I didn't get my hands on one fast enough. They sold out. Boy, they sell a lot of books at those conferences. Oh, speaking of which, I was invited to speak at a conference in 2020 in London on the, uh, another international addiction conference. I think it's called ICANN. So I was invited to send a proposal to that. I may be speaking at the uh, International Conference for Addiction and uh, Trauma next year. I'm going to submit a proposal for that. And there may be one here in San Diego in April, um, which I've been recommended by someone for that. So that's real cool and real exciting stuff. But the uh, kind of the subject of today's podcast really is you know, be a kinder, gentler you through releasing your own trauma and understanding compassion. And I want to be a more compassionate person. I do want to be a gentler person. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to have shame about who I am or reject myself or beat myself up for not being some other ideal. I've done enough of that all my life, right? But I am open and to growth and, and healing and love. And I just want love to be my way of being and my mode of, of operating in the world. So how do I give up my homeland? Well, what's my homeland? I mean, I identify that which I'm attached to and I become willing to step away from it. It might be the internal homeland. You know, if someone was teaching on the internal family system, that's where there's like all these parts of you, you know all these parts within you. It's a family system, but it's represented by like archetypes, you know, we could call aspects of self, like in the 12-step Buddhist, you know. And there, that's like your, that's your, um, that's your emotional biosphere. I have to write that down. That's a pretty good, it's a pretty good way of thinking about it. Emotional, internal um, biosphere. And all the parts of ourselves, you know. So what's the homeland? It's the place where I live in my heart and soul. It's the place where I spend the most time. It's the place where I go for refuge. You know, we talk about refuge in, in Buddhism, in the Dharma. I go for refuge to the Buddha Dharma Sangha. 
Great to have the words. Great to mouth the words. Great to walk to the temple. Where's the refuge? Where's the refuge? Where's the homeland? You know. So we want to look at, I guess, you know, we want to look at being willing to step out of our comfort zone and step out of the familiar and into a place that we don't want to be. And then, you know, speak in that voice, speak to that voice, you know, speak as that voice, the voice of anxiety, speak to that voice. Here's what I want. Hey, anxiety, here's what I want you to know. I hear you. Hey, I'm the voice of anxiety. I am on edge. Nothing is safe. I've got boy, but I'm looking out and I'm keeping my eye open and I'm hyper vigilant. And hey, step out of it. You know, double out another copy of yourself looking at anxiety and saying, hey, I hear you, I feel you. Thank you. Thank you for that work. Thank you for helping me survive. It's, it's, it's a bit much at the moment. Let's calm down. Let's take a breath. Inhale. Breathe in compassion for anxiety. Exhale. Pause in the empty spacious awareness before breathing in. Okay. So I think we're off to a good start. 2019. Things are looking different, looking good. Buy the books. Go to Amazon.com. Recommend them to friends. Share the podcast. Go to the 12stepbuddhist.com. Get on the email list. There's a free yoga of being a badass uh, link up there. Or you can see an infographic that I had designed. It's pretty cool. I submitted the 10-year anniversary edition of the 12 Step Buddhist. And we're waiting for a response from the editor to see how, if they hated it, if they loved it, if I need to do more, do less, etc. and so forth. But that's happening, and I'm now full bore on the Compassionate Recovery Project. And things are looking real good, so stay tuned. Thank you for your ongoing years of support and all the lovely, kind emails saying how much you love the podcast and looking for new books. So really appreciate it. You guys keep me going. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Darren B. Littlejohn at gmail.com. I do have that Google voicemail. It's in the previous podcast. I don't have it on in front of me at the moment but I'll get that to you on the next episode but this has been episode 44 of the 12 step Buddhist podcast we'll be talking to you soon peace out and namaste